So I noticed last round, coming up in here, that these this area was blockaded. And I couldn't see what was blockading it. And now this round, the uh, Barbarian Fleet comes into view. Luckily, I'm almost done with my own trireme. And I did learn, partly from talking to Scott outside of the game from observing, but he's got a Barbarian problem. He might have founded a second city right here? Because look, look at that pattern. There's no way he would have all this extra land, because I know his capital is like right up here. He must have founded a city like right here to get this iron and this copper. Which is interesting that he's going to stay away from the water. Because I'm pretty much, if I actually declare war, I'm only going to attack his capital. Like I don't really care about the rest of it. So my plan continues. I basically walled him off from the whole top of the map, which I don't have a lot of room to settle. I can stick a city here. But I'm actually going to crank out a settler sometime soon send it up over here I think I'm gonna build it right there well the reason for that is one I'll get this iron and stone and I'll get the sugar which is a luxury resource that'll ensure that I can actually support this city two it maximizes the land I'll have access to that's useful and it'll abut right up against Prague thus giving me quite a nice buffer here so I'll have a city here of a city here probably eventually still build a city here or maybe I could conceivably see myself building one, like, here. The problem is Wellington. Because Wellington is going to expand and get those horses. So unless I'd push this earlier in the game, there's no point in expanding up there. But anyway, very importantly, uh, <laughs> there's a hut hiding here I didn't know about. Now, I could, if this one will let me upgrade my unit, which I think it will, I could theoretically take this guy, send him all the way down here, and if I step on that, I could turn him into a straight-up crossbowman, which would just be the god unit on this map for some time. But I think I'm not gonna. I think I'm just gonna take it now. Let's see what I can actually take here. Yep, so I could upgrade my unit. This will only give me an agent technology. Ooh, I actually do have an important choice. I could just get a free religion right now. Do I take the free religion, or do I take the composite bowman? It's actually a really tough choice. I decided, definitely, that I'd rather have the unit. The religion stuff is not great in a small map like this. Uh, I'll let Scott do whatever he wants with the religion. I'm just going to ignore religion in this game. Oh, I was just going about my normal business. There's probably nothing up there. I could steal that worker. But I'd rather have Wellington be my friend. Sugar. I can get some sugar. Definitely get some sugar. So now an important choice as well. <laughs> See, I sort of filled out the old air instead of jumping forward. Partly because jumping forward here wasn't that useful. At this point, I think I want to blitz culture. I've got plenty of defense and trapping I got, which I wanted, because I can use that to get some camps around, and I really want to buff out my cities. But I think this stuff is not that immediately useful. Ah, uh, swordsmen would be pretty good, because I have enough money to upgrade immediately, and then I could also build the Colossus. I'm going to go for ironworking first. I'm going to upgrade that warrior to a swordsman, and then my swordsman and two composite bowmen are going to harass Scott for a while, while I then skip this middle part and jump straight up here. Barbarians just keep cropping up. I know Scott's having similar problems with them, but I'm just going to farm them for culture for the time being. Culture and experience. So I'll have this guy go clear that camp out. I bet the camps are going to keep spawning up here, and I think that's fine. So this guy... I actually want another military unit here, because I want to send both of these archers forward to harass Scott. So, I'm not sure if I'll do it, but I'm still pretty much planning on building a third city here. Because a lot of cities here with one, it'll just give me more access to the sea to control it so he has no approach to my capital. And two, remember, my power is that my units fight better in my own territory and I get all this expansive territory. So I build one here. This whole area will all be my territory so we can't easily march an army through to get to my capital. Same thing here. So as much as I don't want to go beyond the four city limit, I have one, two. I could build one here for three. Still thinking about building one up here or here. That would be four or five. But I could also build a city 
Right here. Now, why, Rem, would you build a city right next to Scott's stuff uh, at the edge of the map like this? Well, one, if I actually put it one more over, I could start farming this for faith and eventually get a religion and some stuff later in the game. More importantly, all of this would be my territory too, and I wouldn't even care if he took the city. It would be a big challenge for him to take it, and if he did, uh, it'd probably just give him a lot of unhappiness, and he probably wouldn't really be able to use it because it'd be kind of a crappy city. And two, I could then have military units all in here just harassing and preventing him from expanding his territory northward. I'd also get access to this iron, and that iron. That's 12 iron. Might actually put the city on this hill right here. Even though, heavy overlap with this city. Three away, I think that's far enough. Then I wouldn't get the stone. But it's desert stone, so who cares. <coughs> putting it on the hill would make it more defensible. Equally useful would be putting it right there. Both of these will get me Mount Sinai. This one would just mean a little less overlap here, but I still wouldn't get the stone. So I think I might actually just put it on the hill. So we'll see. We'll pay attention to see if I do that or not. Now, I want to spread my religion as I build more cities, because remember, my benefit is a ton of healing if I'm next to a friendly city. So I would actually like to have that benefit in these further cities I build, but this pantheon won't expand. I would need to actually expand the religion to make that happen. I'm still content that taking the composite bowman was the right choice, because now I can clear out that barbarian camp and that barbarian camp, and... As much as I hate to do it, I really want to send this guy up here to harass. Maybe I'll send this guy up here to harass. Or I could bring this guy back down, let this be relatively undefended a little bit longer, and send this guy forward. But now I think I'm actually going to send both these guys forward. Hmm. We'll see. We'll see what I do with this guy after I take out that camp. This warrior is definitely going to poke around in here, possibly clear out this camp. Might actually move him back and heal. But generally, I just got to wait for this to finish so I can be friends with Wellington, uh, get these workers done, and just really buff out these cities before I extend, expand too much further. I think I want to build... Now eh, we'll see what I build. Barbarians continue to be a uh, surprisingly difficult problem to deal with for the size of this map, because unless I post military units around here, they'll keep coming. Now, I'm just going to farm them, because the culture boosts are actually pretty good, but it means that I need to keep military units around here, and this guy just sort of maneuvered in annoyingly. This is the third time that's been pillaged by someone. Even more annoyingly, I'm one away from being done with this mine, and I don't want to risk having to deal with chasing this guy and catching him back, so I gotta do this. This guy's gonna have to move in, deal with that, this guy'll finish the mine, then he'll go repair this. The downfall of this, coupled with the fact that Hong Kong just recently stopped being my uh, friend, they're a happiness sieve, and I kind of needed that happiness. Now, they'll be friends or allies with me again very soon, because as you can see, I'm finishing some copper here shortly, but not soon enough. So now I'm in a predicament, because I could redirect temporarily away from the Colossus to build something else over here, but which could be a military unit just to sort of secure this. But I think this Spearman, coupled with the city itself, and this guy, now that he's finished this encampment temporarily, might even not finish it off. I'll let it spawn another Barbarian, send this guy back up if I need to. I can live with the temporary lost happiness. If I really want it back in a hurry, one thing I could do... See, this guy is finishing his walls, and because I'm unhappy now, he's not going to grow quickly. But what I could do in here is buy this workboat. Be about a little over half the money I've got, which money can be a problem on these maps. I don't necessarily want to spend this because i got a really nice nest egg, but the workboat could immediately the next turn go get these whales and get me a nice happiness boost. The other thing Scott didn't realize is that uh, based on demographic and trade information, those are the only three resources he's got, and if I knock out whales, 
it'll be a serious blow to him. It also means that he won't be able to get the money from these two spots in Babylon. And if you look at the demographics, I've got a lot more people and a lot more everything than him. He's beaten me on science, not by that much, but enough to where it'll be a problem. And right now I'm very unhappy and he is very happy. I built these three triremes, and he can't see them all. I told him in real life, jokingly, that I have a trireme, and he said, don't worry, I'll soon also have a trireme to defend my whales. I think I'll be okay as long as I have those whales. So what I'm thinking about doing... Now, it's I could wait one more turn, because these guys... I could finish this off, because look, I'll do about that much damage per trireme. I could finish this off in two turns no matter what. And the worst case scenario is his special bowman plus the city, plus what's left of the trireme, take out one of these three triremes that I've got. Which should actually make my economy work out okay. But the other thing I could do is buy the workboat, wait one more round to get my happiness up, despite my problems over here, and then attack this guy. I just gotta keep all these guys be within range. Which means, too, I could start moving this guy in to be ready to menace as well. This guy I'm just going to keep moving forward. So yeah, I think that's what I'm going to do. Because I just might as well, I don't want to wait for building it here later. I'm just going to buy the stupid workboat. I hope uh, that doesn't come back to bite me later. Next round, happiness. Trireme, 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 and this guy's gonna move here pretty much to ensure that he can't really attack everything. It's basically a target, because I'm gonna move away right afterward. He won't be able to take it out in one round, but it might be menacing enough to cause him to not take out one of my triremes. So it might save me a trireme. We'll see how it goes. I'm highly doubtful that I'll actually lose that unit. These barbarians are giving me a lot of trouble here with everything being pillaged. I'm just gonna have to keep a few more military units around to deal with it. But at least now, uh, it always goes back to this worker too, or this warrior. Anyway, that guy's gonna go over here. That way he won't bother me. Because I need to deal with these barbarians. But at least my worker can come out and finish this mine next turn, because I don't want the mine finished. I want to finish the buildings there. And this guy has enough space to come out and get whales, which makes me happy, which means my triremes will be more effective for what I'm about to do to Scott. Let's see how this works out. I haven't actually really planned out how this would go. So let's see, so I can surround him. One. Two, three. Now I can't pillage in the same round, but Scott probably can only see one of those triremes until suddenly just now. And for good measure, I'll move this guy in. He could bombard, he can attack. We'll see what he does. He's not going to be happy. I'm almost done with my mine here, which will get my happiness back up. And then once I repair this, my happiness will be back up even more. And this guy's just going to have to hang out. As much as I, I was going to send this guy over here to hold Scott off, maybe harass him down here a little bit, and to support building a city here. But I think instead I have to build yet another military unit over here just to defend against these barbarians that are going to keep coming out of this black area forever. But as soon as I finish the copper, then I'll be friends with Hong Kong again, so I'll have a surplus of happiness. Well, you can see here that Scott took the bait. So look, he definitely attacked this unit. I don't know why, because I'm actually going to retreat it now. I only had it there long enough, so he would deflect at least one of these two shots this way to ensure that my triremes would survive. So, you head back to friendly territory. I guess I can deal with these barbarians. Alright, I can start repairing. Alright, so back here. So first things first, now I have to pillage these whales. Let's see what effect this has on us. I don't know if it'll show up right away. I don't know how quickly this updates. So right now, approval. So he's at 99%, which means he's doing fine. Oh, no more whales! <laughs> yeah, I think Scott's out of this game. 
Well, now do I leave these guys here fully interdicted? I'm still not 100% clear on exactly which tiles are interdicted for shipping when units are around like this. I guess I'll retreat them out of range. I'll let this guy remain in range of that, because they can just sort of rotate. But otherwise, I'm just going to keep him here. I wonder how Scott will take the fact that now Hong Kong has also declared war on him. Because I acquired the copper that I needed. Which means now my happiness is off the hook and I can do whatever I want for much of the foreseeable future. <clears throat> and bear in mind, this is without the resources I lost or the resources I can get by building another city. So now I've just got to repair all this build the hell out of this city, and build the hell out of this city. And actually, now might be the time to build a settler and stick it over here somewhere. That will that will basically ensure my victory in this game, I think. Yeah. He's got a pretty good army. I'll give him that. I can't just conquer him, actually. It would take some significant effort for me to conquer him, so I've got to starve him out and prevent him from expanding. He's not that far behind on these things, but population, he didn't get, I don't think he built a second city, I don't know how this happened here. How did he expand his border out that far? Unless he built a citadel there, I haven't looked. Because it doesn't have any tradable cities, so I don't, maybe just because I haven't seen the city yet? I don't know. I actually don't know how that is the way it is. Anyway, I want to get this iron immediately, because then I can upgrade that uh, warrior, and then Scott will get more worried. And I should probably actually move him back this way, because I could go take care of this. This is going to be a problem. I guess I could send my bowman over there. Yeah, I'll just move him in the city. I'll do this. It's not much else to do except win. So, if the game continues, I don't know how good his economy is, actually. Oh, he's making money. Alright, he's got iron. And he does have better science than me. I know he's got significantly more science than me. So, what could he do in the short term that would actually give me pause? Because I'm actually pretty behind on science and slowly catching up. See, he could build horse units and give me some trouble, but I don't think he actually could use them effectively. He could build catapults. Of course, I can build catapults now, too. None of this really helps him unless he got all the way to civil service and could start cranking out pikemen, which... I guess he theoretically could be here if he'd rushed it. He's probably rushing... He wasn't rushing over here anyway. He doesn't have enough of a science lead to make a unit or an advance that could actually significantly disrupt my plan. So that means that my plan would be to not invade because I don't want to lose the defensive advantage I have. So instead, I'm going to finish the Colossus... And then, I think I'll actually build the Settler, and then I'll backfill all this other stuff. So I'll build a Settler. Uh, if I build a Settler, though, then I'll need another military unit to defend this area, because Barbarians are going to keep coming in. That Horseman, get, Settlements are just going to keep spawning up here forever, unless I get a unit out that way. So I actually will need another military unit here in the short term, which eh, I'll decide how to deal with that later. But I'll at least finish the classes. i got four turns before I have to make that decision. I probably don't even need walls here at this point. He's not going to invade. Uh, his only hope would be to expand his city up here. So I may, I might actually do the thing I talked about before, and instead of putting my city down here like I talked about, put the city here, push in on his borders, and one, that would give him a target. He might try to attack it, and it would be a canard. If he attacked a city that I built up here, he couldn't actually keep it because his happiness is so bad. 
Uh, and that city wouldn't have any additional luxury resources for him. So that city, he'd pretty much have to raise it, and if he attacked it, because our militaries are pretty much equal, I could probably send my military in to either take Babylon, or just to plunder the ever-living hell out of all this stuff. It's kind of too late to put a city here. So, the conservative strategy would be that this will hold off any advance out this way. He only has one avenue. If I was really, really conservative about it, because theoretically he could send units up this way and I wouldn't see them. I guess I can see that tile for whatever reason. It looks like I can see that tile. So I guess I'd see units up here, here suddenly. But if I was really going to be conservative about it, I could put a unit here. Or I could build a Pathfinder, a scout, and put it like here and just be ready for it. That means he can't come across this way. And if he did, even though I don't have a huge military here, the bonus I get for being in my own territory would ensure that he wouldn't really be able to get past this city. So having the wall there is a very conservative strategy, and I'd still I'd build a couple of units and just like park one here, park one here, just hold this thing. So this area is still safe. <clears throat> so the other thing he could do, because I'm not allies with Prague, is he could push down this way, maybe settle or build something down here, and then he could try to get here and settle. So if I settle here as well, then I present a unified wall, because look, he can't come across here, at least he won't. This is like a wall of military and culture that he can't get through easily. This fleet forms a wall across basically this entire sea. He can't actually get out of his city. And then, even if he goes across Prague, even if he allies with Prague, which he'd have to get past first, and if I ally with Prague, it's over, then it'd be a wall of my territory yet again. There's no avenue for him to even touch the capital. Scott is courting Prague. Now, Prague's not his ally yet, but he's done something for Prague, at least to have just some barbarians they cared about, which I assume was around this way somewhere. Also, see, like I said, these barbarians are just going to keep coming in, so I've got to continuously deal with them. Let's just go there, because they won't be able to move past me to hedge them off, because I want this guy to survive to be able to build his business. I want him to heal all the way. Oh, I must have gotten iron from one of these guys, because I didn't finish mining any iron yet. I only mined this copper here. Horses and spices. Oh yeah, so I guess iron alongside the cotton and the jewelry and the happiness. Yeah, everything's coming up Millhouse here. They want sugar, so sugar will start a We Love the King Day. They're in the middle of We Love the King Day, so I'll let that be. The city's going to grow pretty quick, especially if my guy starts building here. Let's check out the demographics. Alright. I got a bigger military, not by that much though. Let's see what's going on in here. Oh! He does have a pikeman. Oh, indeed. So, on the technology tree. Yeah. He's in the medieval era, which also means his cities have more defense. So yeah, actually, assaulting Scott would not be too feasible right now. With all the military I have, I would not be able to take his capital. Uh, unless he really messed up, which I doubt he will. So he's already up here, so I am pretty behind on science. I'm going to have to play conservatively just in case. So I'll keep these guys back. I just have to interdict all of his commerce. Make sure that he can't ever get out into the water. Never actually get those whales. And we use my happiness. I'll go with the plan. I'm going to build the city down here. Real soon. And then when it's wartime, I will build the, the canard city here. Just to get... Basically, it'll act like a citadel. Now, if I get a great general, I could build the canard city here. Fill all this in as my territory. And then immediately build the citadel here and just cut him off. So yeah, I'm going to finish this guy, and I think I'll make a settler right away, and just try to build the city here, and I'm just going to try to out-economy him. Because my second city is not great by any means, but that's just because it hasn't been built up at all. I mean, look at this thing. It's got a pretty high population, 
but nothing is developed. I've spent, I've got one thing developed here so far. While I have Scott very nicely locked up over here, the barbarians are continuing to be a surprising problem. Pretty much have to frick my worker there. I'm going to keep sending this guy forward anyway because I want to start continuing to harass Scott up here. But after I finish the Hanging Gardens, I'll build another military unit there. Take care of these barbarians just to get the money, even though no one cares about that yet. Nothing interesting to do with these guys yet. I need to get some marble. Does anyone even have marbles? Marble even exist on this map. He's got some. It's right there. Alright. Well, I'm not going to get that anytime soon, that's for sure. I'll deal with these guys effectively. Because now they're not strong enough to kill this guy in one hit. They can't walk through and come over here to pillage. If they pillage that, I'll kill him. I'll come back around and repair everything again, and it'll be fine. You know, all my iron mines are almost done up here, because you can see my swordsman's going to be kind of crappy until I finish the iron mine. So I've given in to the fact that these barbarians are going to be spawning constantly, and instead, I've just been farming them. One, to make my the city-states love me, which is a huge advantage over Scott, because basically this is my whole territory from here all the way around to here. And if I get Prog to be my ally, then I've got the entire map, and there's literally nothing Scott can do in the long run. So, also, I would basically have to settle out here in these corners so I'd see the territory, or I'd have to station a military unit like here, 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 here. It'd be way too many units. Even if I use scouts, it would cost me too much because you can't easily generate a lot of gold. Now, I was positive here until these barbarians built their camp and then took out my trade route. But let's continue this trend of destroying barbarians, getting culture boosts, and making city-states my friends. Oh look, who's my ally now? Wonderful. Now, I know Scott has a little bit of army. I got my triremes here just denying him this commerce. Now, see, he's got a trade route. It's clearly going over here. <clears throat> so, before I was going to send one of these guys across, and I just didn't. I feel like now's the time to do it. I should s I'll should build another military unit here, because I just finished something. So I'll send this guy all the way across, take that thing out along the way. And all the way across, and then I'm just going to plunder his trade route. It'll take a long time, but I think it'll be worth it. So let's see what he's got. He had a swordman. There he is. I know he has a horseman somewhere, too. The horseman might be down here. Anyway, I want to keep these guys nearby just to deny him these whales. These guys will probably be fine. So I could either circle these guys back around to continue defending against barbarians and then move these guys forward safely, or I could just build a new military unit here and have these guys continue onward toward glory. I'm not planning to invade Scott necessarily, I'm just getting ready to harass him. Oh, pikeman. He's got some decent science. Let's see if I can lure him into an attack. See what he does if I just menace him here. Yeah, it's just that guy there. I'm going to stay out of range still for now with these guys. And I'll stay in my territory because I get a fighting bonus in my territory. So if he's got the horseman, it would have to be here, here. I doubt he's trying to sneak up this way. Or it might be out down over here somewhere. So... If it were here, he could theoretically sneak in here, and I think he could attack this guy. Don't think he could kill him in one turn, though, because it's just a horseman, and there's no way he has knights or anything yet, even though he's got these pikemen. So I think I'm okay. Mostly think that because... Ooh! <laughs> Alright, so I'll let that go. I'll get this workshop done. Did I finish the workshop? Is that what I did? 
Yeah, I did finish the workshop. So now I got a production powerhouse. Look, I can crank out some military units and just start sending them. I can also crank out a caravan and get back that money I was losing. Or I could crank one of these, all these out. Might be time. If I crank the Great Wall out, let's see. Terracotta army wouldn't be great. I'd get one swordman, one spearman, one composite bowman. Though, one swordman, one spearman, one composite bowman. Not bad for eight turns, because that would take me three, five, it would take me eight turns. Okay, that's not really that exciting then. Guess I could do this and bust out culture. I doubt he's going after it. Then I go back and get these. Does a city-state I'm not allies with? So Buenos Aires, marble I'll never get. Uh, I can send him gold if I really want to be allies with Buenos Aires. So they're off. Hong Kong, whatever. Great Merchant, Temple of Artemis. I doubt Scott's going to build that. And I could finish it in six turns, which actually is pretty good. So what's going to be my overall strategy? I want these guys to just finish. I want to build this city out to be gigantic. And I do want to settle here, but there's been no rush. And I'm just building these cities up to be enormous before I settle here. And then here. And then maybe here. Maybe here. Hmm. I kind of want to send this guy onward to take this out. I will need defenses here. I guess I should send this guy back around. Is that my guy? Yeah, that's my good guy. So he can move fast over terrain. So I'll send him back around this way to be my defensive buttress against barbarians because I don't want to get plundered again. That's happened too many times. I'll send this guy off this way to take this out and then eventually menace Scott's caravan. I'll let this spearman come onward, and I'll just have one military unit here for now defending. I'll menace here and see what Scott does about that. I could build the settler now and just go nuts, but then it would be hard to build... I guess just that. The great people aren't going to be that big a deal. The Great Wall would make it so that Scott cannot invade me. For any... Like, it would make it impossible. The game will never get to artillery. So that would basically make me invincible. That would get me friendship with Buenos Aires, which gets me sugar, which I can get just from settling. But this being an ally would be moderately useful. It's more useful to be Prague. I'm going to get a free monument as soon as I build another city. So I don't need to worry about this getting in the way of building another city. I can build that any time. That'll finish real quick, but I don't really care. I could Blitz Culture, but it's not really going to do anything for me in this game. What? Really? Let's see what's going on here. What's he see me as? So, 1287. 928. Alright. He's got low culture. I could try to go for a culture victory, possibly, because if I'll control the map, I can get all the ancient artifacts. That's way late game strategy. I'll probably collapse before then. So I don't think I'm going to bother with the whole culture thing. I might just build this to guarantee. Now, another kind of side thing is that I have my faith here, my uh, Pantheon, and I, d I got it from a hut, so I didn't actually get anything else here. But it's basically an amazing defensive thing because of my plan. Remember, this city is a defensive city to make sure you can't come across that way. So I can put units here and they'll basically be invincible. But if I build another city here, it won't get that benefit unless I push the religion up and spread it. And I don't have any faith production. And I don't care that I don't have any faith production. So I could buff out this city in some moderate, mostly pointless ways. I could build a military unit. I think what I should do... I'm okay on money for now, so I can actually let that fester a little bit. I think I'm going to finish one of these wonders. I could finish this and scare the hell out of Scott. And I could buy a scout or a catapult and just make my military huge in a hurry. So I could use cash to like buy this and independently finish this. Or maybe I'll let Scott build it because his economy definitely can't afford those units. And if it does and he attacks me, that would actually just be great. I think I'm going to build the Temple of Artemis. Actually, both of these will be useful. All this stuff will be useful. 
I don't think Scott can build him. Ah, Great Wall will make me invincible. I'm going to risk that he's building the Great Wall. And I'm actually going to build the Great Wall while the city festers. And then I'm going to build a Settler. Uh, see me waffling. I'm actually going to build a Settler. I got so much happiness. Let's just go for it. I feel like I should push the game toward an end rather than playing with Scott because the demographics, I mean, population-wise, Scott has no people. Uh, I make so many crops that my population is going to be double or triple what it is now in short order. Uh, I can just make, I can just fill the screen with spearmen and just surround him and starve him out. I have plenty of gold. I'm about to have a lot more land. Comparably sized armies, he has a lot of science and a fairly strong core of a tiny army. I'd have to overwhelm him with crappier units. Uh, he's ahead of me in science, of course, because he's playing the science civilization. I think he's had two great uh, scientists. And here. So, behold the glory of the Shoshone. Because this is where I said from the beginning I was going to build a city. See how it starts with all this extra territory? Holy shit! That implies some very important things. So one, because it starts with all this extra territory, even with no worker, it'll basically have enough decent spots to grow pretty quick on its own, independent of any other factors. Now, there's a little bit of an extra factor here that I got empire modifiers, but it's got all this extra space, so it can sort of pick and choose. But two, I'm almost done with this lumber mill, and then this workers just come right over here and buff this city up. I'm also, to just rapidly grow it, see this caravan? That caravan's just going to make money here. But then I'm going to, as soon as I finish the Temple of Artemis, instead of making another wonder, I think I'm going to make another ship caravan really quick. And I'm going to point it here to, again, just boost the food up so I can build this city quickly. Now, because I already finished, look at this. Aqueduct and Monument to start. That is the true power of a small civilization. Uh, it's not like you want to build four right away when you've gone for tradition. You can build two right away and buff them out, and when the time is right, plop a city down, and it just starts out with this huge advantage. Because I'm still going to get another thing in 21 turns. And now that the city's here, the barbarians won't spawn, so they can only spawn down here, up here... And may, theoretically, right there. That's a problem, you see another one spawned here. So I've got one military unit that's going to sort of make the rounds and clean all this stuff up. Uh, I guess I should theoretically keep this swordsman over here to protect my worker from the eventual barbarian spawn here. But fortune favors the bold. I'm going to start moving over this way to get in a position to keep an eye on Scott and to look where this caravan goes. I can sneak in here. I don't care if Prague hates me because actually Prague's going to like me real soon. Because I'm about to finish the Temple of Artemis. But I'm going to move this guy in. And I'm going to plunder this trade route. And then Scott, I think, is going to give up the game. Without any war, any bloodshed. He'd really like these whales, but he can't get them. Oh, look. He, he knows something's up. So I know he's got a horseman somewhere over here. Uh, he's got that pikeman. He's got his composite bowman, his regular fancy Babylonian bowman. All right. So he keeps taking pot shots at this guy. So I think I should come in and then take pot shots back. This guy, I'm going to swing around the long way and then he can heal slowly. This guy is not going to level up anytime soon, so watch this. I'll go here. Remember, my religion says that he's going to heal quickly. And I'll just move a brand new guy here. I'll take all this risk. B bam So now, if he harasses me... ...by attacking this guy or this guy with this bowman, then this bowman will strike and this bowman is going to move in. Most likely he's going to retreat a little bit. If he advances, well, whatever. I'm just going to keep menacing him. So what to build in my new city? It's going to have more population in a hurry, so these turn numbers don't really mean that much. But a library will be useful in a hurry. That might have th The third city 
with the library might actually catch me up to Scott. Oh, I guess my if I found a new city, I've never found a city between my in a game before between when I got a pantheon and when I made a religion. I guess I just start with the pantheon. That's that's cool. I'm not gonna even bother with religion then at all. I wasn't going to before. I'm definitely not going to now. I could push culture. I should probably start building a military unit. The city's gonna expand pretty quickly, so if I really want to push this city, I could do the granary. But he's not gonna have any deer. Is that deer? No, it's, I, there's nothing here. So granary won't do anything. Uh, bust out the worker and just start blitzing up, like really building up the city. Maybe I'll do that so I can rapidly build the city up. So I'll build a caravan really quick to build this up even further, and then I'm going to immediately switch to build military units, or wonders. So these guys are all set to harass Scott. And look at the demographics now. Holy shit, do I have a lot of land. So in terms of late game, if, if Scott doesn't surrender, I might actually just build another city here? No. Because I want, oh, I want to get these horses. These truffles. Actually, here would be good then. Because then I can, can I'll get this camp. I'll get that pasture. I'll get that pasture. I'll get that for the truffles. I'll get the wheat. I'll overlap with this city. I wouldn't be the worst place to put if I want to build my fourth city there. The other place is here. That's where I was kind of planning originally. Right along the river. I could actually back it up a little bit, but there's no point now because these city states have filled in. So I'd probably just build it there. I could build it up here to get that die and this faith, but at this point, and this stuff, not the worst place. I would build it like right here, actually. Or here, here. Build it here. No, I'd build it here. Here. Anyway, I don't care. I'm not going to build that city. See, I'm either going to build one here just to fill it out and build an industrial powerhouse, or here. The other final option was to build a city like there and just get all this territory. Forget this. I don't care about the faith. So if I build it on this hill, I'll get access to that iron, that iron, that stone. It'll fill in this whole area being my territory, which my units get a bonus in fighting. And then Scout will expect the assault to come from up here, and I'll sort of mass an army, and then I'll just build some giant other army down here, bring it up, and then just end it. So we'll see what happens, but this game is over, and I just have to push Scott to his final defeat. Scott definitely knows it's over. Uh, I was just chatting with him. He sees my sword man hanging around over here, and asks me what I'm up to. So he's probably got a Scout here or here? Somewhere in this area. But I told him, oh, I'm protecting a settler. And he's like, there's nowhere to settle down there. And I've made up some lie. But no, really, I'm down here because I'm going to plunder his trade routes. See where this caravan's going? See that trade route there? I can't kill it now because it's here. It's going to bounce off the city, come back. We're still at war. It's going to hit my sword man. And I'm going to plunder it. And I think that's the end of Scott. I want to do the same thing up here. Let's see what's going on. Because he's got a trade route up this way, too. There it is, that one. If I just get in his path, same thing, it's going to bounce off. So I'm actually going to put my units up here, which will risk them to some injury. Yeah, look at that nice, look at that line. He, this thing is going to come back, it's going to, next turn it's going to go one, two, I forget how many spaces they move. Lay the end here, here, and then I'm going to get it. It's going to be good news. And maybe I'll declare war and steal that work. <laughs> we'll see what happens. Otherwise, I forget what, I already forget what I was building over here. Right, I'm just building military units. Let me see how much that pushed up my demographics, actually. Not that much. Scott's got a reasonable sized army over there somehow. Right, I gotta slowly take out these barbarians. This guy's one of my best guys. He's just gonna stay here the whole game, though, and take out barbarians. This guy is moving up here. Because, like I said, I do want to maximize these cities. I'm going to advance wars. Even though I've 
90% likely won this game, and I can probably push to the end now. I'm not going to risk it. I'm not going to... Uh, like in Advance Wars, you move every stupid unit you've got every turn until the very, very end, even if you don't think you need to, because if something goes wrong, having all those infantry that are working their way across the map will be a big deal. So I'm going to make sure my victory is absolute, which means I've got to buff this city up, because like already I've got a guy, two guys on unproductive or unimproved uh, places. So i got to correct that. Let's go up here and build a mine and a pasture. And this horseman, what can I do with the horseman? I'm going to swing down first to make sure there's no barbarian spawning. Then I'm going to come across here. I think I'm going to push toward the end, so I might just start building military units at this point. Though I could bust some of those out. The only one left, though, is Buenos Aires 1 statue of, statue of Zeus, which is not super... I mean, it'll be moderately useful to take out his city, actually. Maybe I should just build it really quick. It's only six turns. The other thing I can do is start cranking out military units, or build a barracks and then start cranking out military units, or I could just crank out a sea of triremes and use that in the final assault to surround him, and then one by one weaken the city, because it's basically a bunch of extra, effectively extra land melee units. They won't survive. I mean, look, attacking that city, can't see it there. Not great, but it adds up when you got a bunch of them. I think I'll build a statue of Zeus. That'll sort of push this toward the end, because it's 15% attacking cities. He's only got one city. Taking that city ends the game immediately. Might as well just go balls out. I got plenty of money for the end. Uh, in fact, I can really ignore my economy for the rest of the game. And the workers are just going to buff these cities out just in case to make them bigger and bigger and bigger to really, really push these demographics over the top. I mean, look at this. Our armies are relatively close, but I can support a massive army, and he cannot. He's ahead of me on science because of these two things. So one thing I might want to do when I rush in is just start pillaging all this crap to starve the city out. If I hit one of these, then our science gets much closer and he won't be able to build more powerful units. He's probably pretty close to being... Let's see what he could build. So, I'm about to get pikemen. That might be enough for me. I'm not even going to bother with... I guess I could then build, do physics just to get the trebuchet. But I don't have any siege units right now. I might just try to take it by surrounding his city with regular old units and just starving it out. Uh, I'm going to hit those... Other, uh, we'll see what happens. But I'm going to take out these two caravans. That'll mean he won't be able to afford to maintain this military. And then... Maybe he'll just give up. That might just be the end. There might be no recovering from that. Uh, very fortuitous that I built this guy here. Because look at that, barbarians popped out. Now to move in for the kill. Oh, they're not dead, son of a... Oh, well. Doesn't really matter. Alright, so let's see what's going on here. Where's that caravan? There's that caravan, and it's gonna come back this way. And that's good, and it's gonna be pillaged. So where's that other caravan? It's gonna come back this way. So look at this. Look at this. You see that move there? That reshuffle, the transformation? That is why when war is in Civ. Now I can't attack again. Let's just take a look. And you get up there to get working on this. So I'm gonna pasture. Mine, yeah, I got my plan. None of this stuff is really going to be interesting anymore. Just got to keep an eye on Scott. <laughs> yeah, so see, I've got coverage if he comes in here. And I've got coverage here as well. I've got two melee units on the front line. Where we're going to intercept that caravan as soon as it turns around. This guy can't do anything about it. His caravans are forfeit. And I'll have my new Spearman soon, because I have infinite production capabilities compared to Scott. 
I could use my money and just seal the deal and make this guy my ally. I'm gonna pillage this first. It is a thing of beauty when a plan comes together. See that money? Where'd that caravan go? Where'd that other caravan go? Simultaneous caravan destruction. So now, I mean, it's over. I just gotta either convince Scott to surrender or destroy him. I'll wipe out these barbarians. I'll start building a military just to walk over there and end this.